What's up guys, this is Johan and on this video I'm just gonna go take you guys around with a few new add-on equipment and different things that I just add to my 75 gallon aquarium and I'll probably give you a little walkthrough of my plans for the big tank since it's coming up in a month um, so anyways let's get into the video Alright guys, so here is the saltwater, 75 gallon saltwater aquarium as it is right now. <coughs> Everything is doing good. I think we are just under month five. So all the fish, you know, all the coral, they are all doing okay. Um, there goes that lovely marsh owl, still doing really well. And um, all the other fish, queen angels right back there, getting cleaned from the cleaner shrimp that I put in on my last video. And um, so let's start off at the top and work our way down with the new equipment that I'll be that I have added to the 75 gallon aquarium. So up top first here, the first two things we have here are two fish feeders off of Amazon. This one is uh, USB powered. It does have internal battery, um, but I just have it USB powered, so I don't have to change battery. So that power comes on the same time as this light right here and this light is my diy light so this comes on first thing about about one o'clock in the afternoon so it comes on same time as this light um and that light i guess is new as well um it's a diy light that i made a, about a year ago and i've been using it on my 10 gallon tank but i took it off and i haven't been using it for anything else so I put it on there because I wanted to get a different angle. So if you look at the two lights right there, this one is angled back that way, and then this one's angled back that way, and then this one kind of shoots straight down. So two black boxes, and then my DIY light. Um, if you guys want to know how I made that, I'll put a little card up there just in case you want to um, take a look at that. Um, but back to the feeders. So this one is USB powered, and it comes on only 20 either 12 24 or 48 hours so it does have it right now set to every 24 hours um so it comes on at um two o'clock when all the lights come on and then it does the first feed in and then it repeats it every day so that way i don't miss my fish feeding and it's only 24 hours so it's not like you know i'm overfeeding then this one i have on that comes on uh once every two hours starting at about five o'clock so five and then um seven and then nine and then the last thing is like 11 o'clock at night uh, my fish they don't like to chow down a lot and that keeps them um especially the marsh adult that keeps them away from the coral i haven't seen him going at the coral in a lo good long time actually so all the coral are looking fine so i think he got his coral fix and he's getting used to the, to the aquarium and the amount of feeding that i'm doing that's getting him to relax so um, um but i have it with my diy fish feeder right here and um that one what it does is if i feed the fl flick food um, it falls in there so it doesn't just stay at the top and then get pushed over by the gyre pump and then down the overflow and then just stays in the sump and doesn't get um, eaten by the fish. So the fish feeder um, definitely makes it, or like the DIY fish feeder, it's able to keep all like, if I want to put some frozen mysis or um, some flake food in there, it doesn't, you know, stay at the top and tumble over. It just goes straight down underneath. Next thing I gotta do, since the lights are off, I had some um, a pulp reef, um, reef right and um, um, biopets. I always kind of feed in the late, late or at night for the corals because some of my corals, their tentacles open at night. So I go ahead and just, uh, let me go ahead and pour this in. There we go, the good stuff. And I just pour it in. Um, I don't do it every single day, probably like maybe once or twice a week. And um, it's just extra food for the corals. I don't really turn my flow off like that. Um, it just goes through the aquarium. So the jar pump just went off for five minutes and it's the main return. And that's just gonna feed the little coral. You could see the fish looking for food, but that's that. Um, going down, uh, you know, let's go over here first. So down here, you can see a canister filter that I added. And um, you may be asking yourself, why would I add a canister filter to a saltwater aquarium that already has a um, 
a skimmer, a refugium, um, mechanical filtration, and live rock and all that that you need it. But <coughs> the reason I added this, it's not for any type of filtration. It has a 9 watt EV sterilizer in there, so it's mainly an entire open chamber and um, it's just a UV light so that just gives me a little bit of UV sterilization so I've been running it for the past uh, 48 and uh, about 48 hours or so and um, I definitely noticed the word is a lot clearer um, after I ran it so I'm just it's just mainly for um, like I said, UV sterilization, and you can see the little light right there. Um, this is like a sun sun, um, a sun sun kind of filter that I have had for years, <laughs> ever since I got on the hobby. So um, I took off all any media that's in there. So all that's gonna happen is um, it's gonna do some UV sterilization. I may have to open it once every. I don't know six months to make sure there's no detritus that stays at the bottom over there and just you know just in, is in there but besides that um, it's not doing any mechanical filtration or anything like that um, next thing switching over here to the uh, sump area um, you could see this um, kind of canister thing right here this is um, some calc washer and I've been um, dosing calc washer for the past, I'll say three weeks now. And it's been doing, um, getting my pH up from 7.8 and getting it to about that uh, 8.3 range. And also keeping my alkalinity stable. So my corals are starting to take off. And um, I can't remember what my numbers are. I think it's like four something, but <laughs> well, no, that's my um, calcium. My calcium is about, 413 and my dkh right now on my last test i gotta pull it up it's i think it's eight but i have to double check um so everything is doing good with that so it's just some calc washer in there and i just stirred up so it's still a little bit cloudy i'm waiting for it to um i'm waiting for it to settle out so probably in the morning uh settle out and then i have two valves right, right here one is for um the intake and then the other one is for the outtake so you can see that black um airline right there and that just goes down into a little diy little thing i made from acrylic so it holds the airline tube in also i've been um doing some dosing as well of alkalinis not that much probably like nine mil altogether but it's like three mil at different intervals of calcium and alkalinity just to keep it stable and at the random times of the day um calcium comes on like uh like three o'clock in the morning and then the alkalinity comes on like 11 o'clock in the morning so different times of the day just to get my dosing up and then i've been using the reef dudes um diy uh voss water bottles as my containers so you can see right there i got one alkaline one is calcium and um you can see how much it's used over the past uh a month or so um so i've been testing um weekly and then i saw oh my alkaline and calcium is being used up so i started to dose but it's minor dosing for a month um that's a well, that's a little bit of dosing that have done all right um next thing uh oh side note if anybody stays and lives in atlanta georgia or like or in stone mountain area or in georgia where you want to get some free um cheeto muffer have about almost three ounces so this is a what you call it this is like a 16.9 water bottle a regular water bottle that you get and you can see how much i got of cheetah muffer so i'm gonna put it back in my refugium uh, or put it back in my sump somewhere so it doesn't die but if anybody wants it let me know um i still have more in this kind of thing right here that's been um just getting coral i mean getting the cheeto muffer growing really really quickly so um you can see all the growth so if anybody wants some um stuff is really good um i got a lot too so i could probably spread it bef between a few different guys um and the only thing that's in here is probably a couple bristle worms but um bristle worms and uh copepods and amphipods so if you guys want some amphipods and a little bit of bristle worms you can take the bristle worms out or cheat them off or i get some here just for you 
Right, so my next bit of kit that I have is um, this, uh, it's like a leak, leak detector, it's like a cheap leak detector and um, I got this like 17 box on Amazon, I'll put a link if you guys want that and it comes with um, three leak detectors and then some 9 volt batteries and you just pop them in and put them wherever you want so um, this is just in case uh, for around like for any reason I get a leak it sh I should not get a leak but for any um, weird dramatic thing maybe the tank cracks knock on wood that doesn't happen <laughs> I don't know why I said that but for any reason um, something goes wrong um, it will at least alert me and my wife and um, like so stuff like this like the canister filter for any reason that those tubes break for any reason so that's something that could happen um, and also something that happened a few weeks ago I was filling this up the Kalkwasa reactor and I went in the other room and I did not um, put a timer on it, on it or anything and I forgot it and <laughs> my floor was wet <laughs> so little things like that um, that's what these are for so put them or I'm gonna put them around my tank and then I'm gonna put one under the carpet in that corner back corner right there and that should take care of that all right guys so I wanted to show you how these leak alarms work it's basically a, um, a probe that comes out of the alarm itself and all the probe has is just two metal tabs right there so when um, if you can see the tabs right there so once it gets in contact with water it makes a connection and it just sounds like alarm now I was testing this earlier so I got some water right here and this thing is pretty loud so um, let me go ahead and put this in. so if you're wearing headphones be aware so all right so that was it and it doesn't I had to blow it blow off the water so it stops so there won't be any like false positives if it happens to get moist a bit so if it detects water and the water makes a connect connection it's gonna sound like that low alarm that you just guys just heard almost sounds like a um like a security alarm if someone breaks into your house or something like that so um like i said i got three so i'm basically gonna put um them around their tank one around the tank one around the sump and then one under the carpet somewhere so i might put it in the corner uh because the this house is a bit of a, I mean this level it has a slight slant to the front of the house over that way where the cancel filter is so um, it will the water will usually run down in that direction first um, but yeah that is these pretty cheap about 17 bucks on Amazon I'll try to remember to leave a link below so you guys can get these so there is another one I've been looking for um, it's the one that actually closes the it closes the um, the solenoid so if you have a leak on your arrow system it just shuts a solenoid off and shuts everything down so I would I want that but I can't seem to find it I did find it one time but it was like really expensive for some reason because um, I remember when they came out they were like about 60 40 60 bucks and I saw one on Amazon it's like almost a hundred dollars I'm like I'm, no way if I'm gonna pay a hundred dollars I might just well as well pay for a Neptune leak detector or something hey guys so um I pretty much wraps it up for all my new um, little pieces of equipment on this um, sort of aquarium so um, if you guys want to get a couple plans of what I'm planning to do um, let me step back a bit um, so you guys could have a view of everything um, part of my little mess of my shirt and stuff there so this is um, basically my living room and um, right there is a 75 gallon uh, aquarium and then I have a back section right there of the protein skimmer so what my plans are for once I got the big tank is to keep this tank here or move this entire tank uh, with the stand up to here um, no actually what I want to do is get a, um, a stand that is 10 foot long from um, Freeman Tech that is the company I want to go with so it's a 10 foot long stand that spans from there all the way to the edge of my banister right there and that's just gonna allow me to have um, one long stand um, I'll put different different braces to brace the 75 gallon and the bigger tank so I'm planning to have um, both of them a peninsula so I could see them from four well yeah four different um, angles and I'll have um, 
I think the big tank will be here. And then I'll have to spin spin the 75 gallon aquarium around or have the 75 gallon up front and then have the the 180 back that way. Then I'll have a, like a small center column in between. So if you can imagine um, a small center column in between, what that's gonna do is allow the filtration from the big tank and the 75 gallon because they're both peninsula style aquariums. Plumbing is just gonna come out in between and drop down below. So I'm probably gonna have a hole in the floor right there. And um, which my wife kind of approves, but not really. <laughs> Um, she actually wants me to have one tank, but the way it looks right now, she actually going to fit the whole um, tank on the top floor. And then, you know, you see from here, so down the hallway, coming up the steps or going down the steps in the morning. Looks kind of nice. So wife approves, but not approves. Um, she just has to see it. And once it looks good, she doesn't really care. It just has to look pretty. So if you imagine um, a 10 foot wall of tank, of tanks so small tanks i could keep all my coral that i want to all my high-end coral i could experiment and do whatever i don't have to worry about any fish and then this one is going to be another probably sps dominant because most fish i want to get don't really eat sps um some butterflies and a few more angels and then um antheus and stuff like that so 75 gallon is going to be my you know my <laughs> my um i guess my mixed reef with different things and then the um 180 is going to be my um my sps dominant and different things so from there the the plumb is going to go down here and um right now we're just down in my old office in my new gym now <laughs> for now and um i'm gonna put some beams right here so um just have this is like an old stand and my uh, computer and stuff so I'm gonna have a beam here and then another beam right there um, apply either six by six or some of those um, beams used for um, for above like a garage or something I can't remember what they called so the plumb is gonna come down go across and it's gonna shoot out right um, down here so I am planning right in this corner right here and this is just my um, spare bathroom that's down here. I just use this bathroom mainly if you're coming out going to work or something and we need to use the bathroom before you leave. But it's mainly my fish, currently my fish area where I clean um, all my my protein skimmer and stuff. So you see the line, hour line that I use to waste water if I want to flush the system as well. Um, my little brush that I keep down here, my arrow um, DI um unit uh so it's my arrow memory and i need to not my arrow memory, my yeah resonance it's still enough so i'm gonna change out some of these at the start of the year and get all new um all new cartridges so i gotta get a carbon a pre-filter and then two more um two more di um, not di um two more arrow membranes so anyway so this is like my fish area um so right here i'm planning to have a sump that goes the entire length of this and um then have my mixing containers over here so i'm gonna try to keep everything internal and then i may have put a fan right there so to control the humidity kicks on if the humidity get down here gets a little bit high kind of there's a little bit of air exchange so that way I don't um, cause any mold down here. I'm trying to get, try and keep the house as, as uh, pristine as possible. Or I might do an external um, shed out in the back that houses all the equipment. All right, guys, and here is my, oop, that light's flickering, I don't know why. Uh, that's my, I think the fluorescent lights are flickering, so I'm gonna try to, I don't like that, but anyways. Um, so here is the, the 180 um actually it's like 190 190 um <laughs> gallons but it's at a odd dimension so i'll just say 180 and probably 175 once i put rock sand and all that in um so i'm planning a minimalistic aquascape just like i did on my um 75 gallons something pretty much the same um so less over here more swim room and then more of rock a bunch more rock that's going to go all the way up to the almost the top then a few different um branches and stuff 
that's what I planned for that. So, uh, I bought this tank again. Um, it's one about 190 gallons. Let's say 185. The glass is um, three quarter inch glass. First time I got this tank, I thought it was half inch. So it's three quarter inch glass. Um, so really thick glass. But this tank is 31 inches tall. Um, so that it's not all that good for tall tank. So uh, I'll explain why. Um, so it's uh, 21 inches wide and then 19 inches on the inside with the thick glass and then 30 inches tall and then six foot long. Um, now the reason I said I it's not all that good for a ta tank that's this tall. Um, if this tank was 21 inches or 22 inches lower uh, or instead of 31 inches tall, then um, the problem I'm having once I fill it up for five six days, I was getting some um, bowing that was almost uh, it was half inch on this side and half inch on this side, so almost an inch of bowing which I don't like so what I had to do um, I'm not sure where I put them but I had to order some glass um, quarter inch I mean no quarter inch um, three quarter inch glass and I'm just gonna go ahead and make your brace that's gonna go on top here um, I found some that's much cheaper than my original so that was the main hold up um, the glass for this I didn't want I saw it bowing and it's because it's a tall tank so um, I, I love the tank so I did not return it and say hey can you give me a different tank I love this tank and I want to keep it so because it's so tall um, once I put the Euro brace um, I wouldn't have to see it at all because it's gonna be just a little bit a bit above my eye level um, the way I want to set it up I might put a little lower I'm pit height that's usually the, the go-to but no tank still here. Uh, I'm just getting ready to ramp it up and get ready to go. So I got suction cups. Um, I may not be even be need to touch it at all um, because I got a company that's gonna come out and take care of that for me. So you guys, that is the big tank. Um, if you guys have never seen it or you know done anything with it, it's still here in my garage next to my deep freeze, um, my cars and stuff in here, my truck. So I've been, every time I come home, I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> just jealous. So I'm um, happy it's finally time to ramp it up and get it ready to go. Um, and it's been a good long year since, yeah, uh, almost a year since last January, I think I got the tank. And uh, it's about time for it to get set up. So uh, happy and ready to go. So um, not sure how, if he, how big it looks on camera, but I could lay down in this tank. <laughs> and me and my wife could just have this as a coffin all right yeah guys so that was um, a quick little update um show you a few things are our own tank and the plans for the big tank um hopefully <laughs> nothing comes up and messes with that uh, but we all know things may happen um so that may cause some setbacks but <laughs> hopefully everything goes to plan according to plan and um I'll start the plumbing uh, for, is the first thing I'm planning to do and make sure everything is uh, well good to go and um, everything's leak proof then the stand um, is the next thing get the stand together then the last thing is well not the last thing <coughs> the um, well no you gotta get the stand then the tank and then do the plumbing um, I may just do the plumbing from downstairs to uh the um the gym area i showed you guys downstairs um so that's right below us let me get the plumbing run to just there and then i'll figure out if i'm going to uh put holes in the floor uh in the middle right here over there right in the middle right there or if i'm going to put holes in the back over there so um we'll see from there oh, wrong way. but yeah guys that pretty much wraps up for this video quick little update um i think the most challenging thing i am going to run into with the big tank is um reinforcing the floors um i think those two columns should be just fine um because the 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 um, floor joist goes this way, and which is the way I want to put the tank, instead of putting it this way. I wish the floor just went that way. So once I reinforce the floors and then put some extra stuff down there, so the two, the two beams, and then some two by six by fours that goes across to spread the weight in between the joists, and then um, 
I was still gonna get a structural engineer out here um, to verify. I had one of my friends who is a retired structural engineer. He says, based on everything, I just need two, um, either two six by sixes or two um, beam metal um, beam. So, you know, but he said, you know, go ahead and get another structural engineer out there just to double check his numbers and make sure everything looks good. So that is the plan but anyways guys thanks for watching i keep rambling and keep going so um hope you like this video if you do go ahead and hit the like button down below and also remember to subscribe so you guys could see more up and coming videos and um see the progress of the big tank and everything that's coming i'll catch you guys in the next one